Next, next up, we have Lena Kuznetsova, um, the U.S. representative for GEO, which is actually uh, one of 25's most recent investments that we're extremely excited about. Um, thanks. <laughs> Uh, so GEO is an open source base layer protocol for cost efficient, lightweight, infinitely scalable value transfer. Um, today, Lynn is going to talk about the need for layer three solutions on the internet of value, um, problems with current protocol solutions, and how layer three solutions like GEO can help solve them. Uh, Lena has extensive um, background experience working as an advisor in the blockchain space, and I think we're going to learn a lot from her today. Um, great, and now take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the introduction, and thank you for the funds for organizing the meetup. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about blockchain layer three. What is it in a humble opinion of Geo Protocol team, and why do we need it? So I'd like to start with a short historical reference. Uh, in the 19th century, uh, there was a boom of railroad construction in the US. Multiple railroad development and construction companies appeared simultaneously. Now try, now try to imagine for a second what if each of these companies came up with its own proprietary technology, the size and shape of the car, its technical specifications, and things like that. You mean like the New York subway? <laughs> <laughs> So what I can believe that uh, theoretically one of these shapes or sizes would be more of a, would be better suited for a particular landscape or climate conditions, while others would be better for a specific task. But in the end of the day, each railroad construction company would have to build its own line between any two given points on the map. On top of that, they would have to have their own railroad station in each town, etc., etc. So this all sounds like a lot of additional work, a lot of unreasonable costs that end up being paid by the customer, right? Totally impractical and illogical. Next slide, please. So this is the real map. Luckily enough, railroad construction companies were forward thinking enough, and that's why they synchronized and laid out all the rules early in the game. That's how the real rail con railroad construction started emerged and developed. So that's why we can enjoy railroad, uh, railroad tracks the way, the way they are today. Everything was discussed, all the standards were agreed upon and strictly synchronized from the very start. So uh, how is this example applicable to the topic of my presentation? I think it's a good segue to the problem that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna talk about today, which is interoperability and why we cannot move forward without a universal solution that would allow for a global interoperability. And the key word here is universal. Yeah, there's some fancy um, animation, thank you so much. So over the past year, we have witnessed the emergence of revolution technologies, the, um, the evolutionary significance of which is yet to be recognized, I'm sure, such as well, uh, launch of Bitcoin, introduction of altcoins, issue of first smart contracts, etc., etc. So, uh, and the creation of the internet of value as we know today. Uh, all of that, all that I've just named, is referred to as layer one technologies, the foundational technologies, the economic function of which is value creation, and the technological function of which is um, making sure of, like, basically ensuring possible to transfer and account for your assets. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So it would seem that finally the technology has emerged that would allow us to create, transfer, digitize, and transfer assets. Yet, uh, yet adoption is not happening, uh, and the problem here is not only inertia. Um, the problem is primarily lies in technical limitations, such as uh, scalability issues and inefficiency, and as a result, a low throughput, uh, low transaction speed, constantly growing need for memory for storage of local copies of distributed databases, uh, high cost of fees because consensus will always be more expensive than um, confirmation of non-distributed databases. Etc. Of course, some blockchains aim to solve these problems, and some even do. But what they really do is they re 
reduce the centralization and they lower risk uh, and they lower uh, and they lower resistance to censorship. Something that may be applicable, something that might be okay for enterprise solution, but it's definitely not the goal for universal um, internet of value. So moreover, all of these efforts are tied to individual blockchain projects. And here we have another problem. Different blockchain, blockchain ecosystems cannot interoperate. They cannot transfer uh, assets between each other. So all of the problems that I have just mentioned, they all refer Greater slide, please. So all of these problems, they uh, refer to layer one, to foundational layer of blockchain. And four out of five of these problems are being currently addressed by, dif by different projects. Uh, so all these projects, they are creating kind of an overlay over existing blockchains. Examples of this projects include Lightning Network, Raiden, etc. So we are used to referring to these projects as layer two technologies. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, layer 2 is actually off-chain structure built above the baseline, above the layer 1 technologies, and they are designed primarily to solve uh, the problem number 1, which we just talked through, which is scalability uh, problem. Most proposed solutions involve either state channels or side chain, uh, chains to address this problem. <coughs> the major benefits include increased productivity, reliability, as well as trustless operations. Next slide, please. So here are some of the examples of layer two technologies. Um, Lightning Network, made the Raiden, Trinity, Seller, Counterfactual, this is examples of the projects that use state channels to address scalability problem. Plasma RSK liquid is examples of a project that use side chains to address this problem. Uh, next slide, please. So all of these projects focus on scalability as the main issue, and no one has come up with the idea how to solve interoperability issue. Even though projects like Lightning Network and Raiden claim to do so in the future, um, that's quite a challenge given that each of this project is focused on a specific DLT. Uh, the thing is, ensuring interoperability between, uh, ensuring trustless atomic transactions between different blockchains is extremely difficult due to differences in technical specifications and misalignments in project schedules. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, who will solve the interoperability problem? In our opinion, and opinion of the GEO protocol team, this is the problem that needs to be addressed by different uh, layer. Let's call it layer three. So this is the assumption that we came up with. Layer two is the kind of a project that addresses the scalability problems, while layer three is the type of project that addresses interoperability projects. So who, what is this piece, layer three? Next slide, please. So I think it would be appropriate here to draw an analogy to the internet itself. So there are certain layers in the, in the internet, each of which is responsible for its own functions, such as data link layer, network layer, transport layer. At the data link layer, um, data link layer is a set of protocols that provides for um, data transfer among local networks. Once local area networks uh, network layer provides interoperability among local networks, uh, reaching like a wider network, and then transport layer ensures um, complete transaction transmission of data. So, uh, what's the pe pe peculiarity of network layer in this concept? Is basically it allows for global interoperability, speaking in our terms, creating this one single global internet as we know it today. Um, next slide, please. A similar task in our view should be accomplished by layer 3 project, ensuring interoperability and functioning of separate blockchain ecosystems in a single global internet of value. The key features of a layer 3 projects would be they should be based off-chain, so this should be off-chain technology. Then it should be blockchain agnostic, and what I mean here is uh, ability to work with different kinds of blockchain ecosystems. It should provide possibility for trustless multi-asset transactions. And what I mean here is the ability to exchange one asset for another one in the process of the payment. And finally, it should ensure payments are automated.
economics at worst. In general, very free technologies are not restricted to ensuring interoperability of just blockchains. We can look wider. They can also provide uh, interoperability of any kinds of assets, basically non-blockchain assets as well. Financial institutions, uh, physical assets, uh, you name it. Uh, layer 3 technologies or the Internet of Value can provide uh, interoperability and the global value transfer regardless of where their uh, value comes from and who is the basic carrier of this value. Um, next slide, please. So here we like basically layer 3 technologies can allow for the following use cases such as payment solutions, cross-chain access, cross-border payments, depth scaling solutions, IT solutions. Uh, we can expand the list and add voting systems or loyalty programs here, and I'm sure many more. Um, but the key feature of um, global internet of value would be network effect. And what I mean here is every each new participant, each uh, no matter what kind of participant, be it a user, a customer, or an institution, financial institution, any other institution joining the network, would give a uh, like, huge incremental value to all of the existing participants of the network. Um, so we at Geo Protocol has been researching this topic since 2015 and the solution that we came up with, and we hope the solution that we came up with will become a uh, player uh, on, in the um, future internet of value. So we developed a protocol overlay protocol that allows for scalable, efficient um, value transfers, merging blockchain and traditional worlds together. Among the key features of Geo Protocol, I'd like to highlight uh, local consensus and absence of common ledger, which allows for super lightweight nodes. So basically, a node can be run on a single smartphone. That's enough. Uh, also provide post-quantum cryptography for long-term sustainability, full transaction atomicity. Uh, the, the protocol is totally is fully blockchain agnostic. Um, yeah, I think those would be the key features I'd like to highlight. So this is a, a this is a, a bird's eye view on the geo ecosystem, and probably the worst thing I could be doing right now is like walking you through that. I'm not gonna do that. But I would be happy to take this conversation offline, or better say, off-chain, and uh, discuss the more technical specifications with you a little bit later. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you for being such a friendly audience. Here is my contact information. We're constantly looking for people who are interested in what we're building, who are interested to contribute in any capacity. So please feel free to reach out, and I'm going to stay here for longer. I'll be answer. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions offline. Off chain. Thank you.